Hey Nerdy Knitters! In this video we're looking at bottom-up triangle shawls. Now I know top-down and asymmetrical triangles are really popular, but this is also an alternative construction method for creating a triangle shawl. And for those people who really dislike that garter tab cast on that you have to use for a top-down shawl, that's not necessary here. You can start with just a few stitches and create a triangle shawl. Now we're going to go over the different construction methods. There is more than one way to do this and look at some charts and I'll even start a swatch so you can see how this works in action. Now be sure to stick around because my last tip will show you how to take the basic construction, change the rate of increasing to create a shallower depth but with longer wingspan. Some of us don't like really deep triangles that seem really short. We want a really wide shawl but maybe not quite so deep. There's one thing you have to change to do that so be sure to stick around to find out how that's done. First off, let's look at the basic shawl shapes. Now these are both worked bottom up. This one is worked in garter stitch. You can see the increases are worked right here along the edge. We start right there with just one stitch, one or two, and you increase and then you bind off along this edge. Now this is the same construction. It started with garter stitch but then we added stockinette in the middle and kept our garter edges because our stockinette fabric would roll if we didn't do that. Then we finished with some more garter and bound off. Now an option to this, still it's still a bottom up triangle shawl, but this one casts on the full amount of stitches needed across the bottom. And then it works decreased stitches along the edges and in the center to get to the neck right here. But probably the most common is starting with just a few and increasing. Here's an example shawl. This one starts right here at the bottom and increases along the edges and then stitch patterns are added in there as well to make it a little more interesting. If this method seems a little familiar, you might have used it somewhere before. If you've ever knit one of these dishcloths where you start at one edge and increase along the edges and then decrease, the first part of the dishcloth is pretty much the same construction method for this shawl. So if you've knit one of these, you will understand how to construct this shape. Now let's look at the instructions for the basic pattern. As you can see, we've got a picture of it right here. You would start here and work your increases and bind off there. So our basic instructions for this shape is cast on three. Then we have a setup row. Knit one, increase, knit one, increase, knit one. So you can choose your increase method. I'm gonna just use yarn overs for this. There's our setup row complete. So that would be our first right side row really. So then your options for a basic shawl, if you wanted to work it in garter stitch on the wrong side rows, you would knit. If you want it to be in stockinette stitch, you would purl. We'll just do a basic garter construction here. So those yarn overs, I'm just going to knit them and leave them open along that edge. And then there's our right side row. We knit one, we increase, I'll work a yarn over, knit to the last stitch and increase again. It increases on every right side row. So we get a deep triangle with a short wingspan. That's all there is to set this up and then you would continue if the next row is a wrong side row. So I'm going to do garter and then I would just continue doing that increasing on those edges right there and then working knit stitches across the back of the work. That gets you the basic construction of the pattern. Now of course there's lots of ways to vary this. You could include a stitch pattern in there. Of course you'd have to do some math and figure that out. But if you look here, if we were to chart out the shawl I just started, this is what it would look like. We have increases worked on right side rows. And there you can see the shape is developing just like that. So if you had a stitch pattern, you would want to fit it right into this shape right here. But of course you don't have to do that. You could knit in stockinette. Just be sure to do an edge stitch in garter or seed stitch or even like an I-cord edging would work. Or you could do a garter stitch shawl or a seed stitch. Really any simple pattern would work. But what if you don't like that deep shawl with the short wingspan and you want something that has a wider wingspan and not quite so much depth? 
there's one simple thing you can do to fix that. If you look here, you simply change the rate of increases. You can see right there in the example, this one provides a deep triangle. This one is much more shallow. All we've done is we've increased on every row, right side and wrong side. And that gives us a more shallow triangle and more length across the top of the shawl. This shawl here uses that construction method. I increased along every row. I worked yarn overs, but then I knit them through the back legs to close them up. But they're worked on every single row. And you can see this is a fairly shallow triangle, but it has a long wingspan which is something I prefer in my triangle shawls. So give this construction method a try. If you like the deep triangle, just increase on every other row. If you like a more shallow triangle with longer wingspan, increase on every single row. And be sure to print out your copy of this. If you Google Tanya Knits Resource Library, you can find the directions for printing this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have a recommended pattern that uses this construction, be sure to leave us a link. I'm going to leave a link here at the end that shows you 10 different patterns that use this construction method. And don't forget to subscribe if you like to get nerdy with your knitting.